is this, Katie? Well, this is my weather station. I wanted to learn more about weather, so I put it together. And look at all these fun things. We've got this um, canister that measures the rainwater. We right. have about one, no, wait, half an inch. Not, Not a lot. Rain gauge? Rain gauge! Is that what that's called? Yeah. Oh, I just thought it was like rain doohickey thingy. But thank you for telling me the real name. And then I've got this thing right here. And that shows me if the wind is blowing. And then this right there, that's like an arrow. And that tells me what direction the wind is blowing. And then this thing right up here, right, right there, that is the thermometer, so that tells me what the temperature is outside. Wow, that's really that's cool, Katie. Okay. That's great. Yeah, I was so very excited. That's really, really fun. Yeah. So have you learned anything about the weather outside today? Well, I've learned that it's raining. You can tell because there's water in the rain doohickey, I mean, rain gauge. Yeah. And that it's a little windy and that the weather, uh, the wind is blowing that direction. I can't see the compass on top, so I don't know what direction it's actually blowing. South, southwest. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, since you're so into weather, what if we work on the weather award today? Oh, yay! That's exciting! So, this first thing that you need to do, you've probably already done some of, but what we need to do is we need to observe the weather, and then we need to chart it and compare it to the weather report. So I've got these kind of fun um, sheets that you can record the temperature and if it's sunny or rainy or cloudy and what the cloud, what kind of clouds there are. Oh, that's so cool! My yeah. little weather station will help me do that. I think so, and yeah. you can write down other notes too if you wanted. Oh, yes! I'm excited to keep track. Yeah, and you can do that, and you can do it for a couple of days even if you want, and just see what the weather looks like over time. I can't wait. I think that'll be really fun. Yeah. So when we talk about weather, there are some words that we use, and. Those words would be things like wind and clouds, fog, rain, sunshine, and atmosphere. Do you know what all those words mean? Well, wind is when wind blows, like on my wind gauge thing. And then um, sun, yes, I know what that means. That's sun, good. That, yep. So wind is the movement of air by the uneven heating of the earth by the sun. So the sun warms up parts of the earth and then there are parts that are cooler and so the, the wind happens because those those two different temperatures and so the wind moves. It's not, not like you can see it or you can hold it, but you can certainly feel the force of the wind. Yes. I went up on top of Mount Washington last summer. Yeah. And it was very windy up there. Right. I had to like lean forward and try to run and I didn't get very far. But then when I turned around and the wind was at my back, it pushed me and then I had a hard time stopping. Yeah. Yeah. You're my mom had to right. stop. Help me. Yeah. Well, how about clouds? So we know what clouds are, right? Yes. Yeah. Clouds are like those white fluffy things in the sky. Yeah. But did you know that clouds are actually um, little droplets of water or ice in the Earth's atmosphere? And we can see them. There's enough water in there that we can see it. Ooh. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. And the reason that clouds appear white is because that the water droplets inside them are so tightly packed that they're reflecting most of the sunlight. That's it. That hits them. Oh. So this is really important. Okay. But white is the color that our eyes perceive, what we see, when all the wavelengths of sunlight are mixed together. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. So did you know, um, if you think about it, when it's about to rain, the clouds get really dark, right? Yes. It's like gray or black and it's not white. It's not white, and that's because the water vapor is clumping together into raindrops in those clouds, and that's leaving bigger spaces between the drops of water, and so less light is reflected, and the rain cloud appears gray or black. 
Oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah, but wow. pretty cool. Well, that is cool. So did you know that there are different kinds of clouds? Well, I knew there were like the white kind and then the angry kind that rain. Yeah. Yeah. So there are also, there's different kinds of white clouds. So there's these clouds, they're called cirrus clouds. Wait, what did, yeah, what, what? Like those ones. Whoa, look at that. So cirrus clouds are these wispy, curly, or they're kind of stringy looking. And they're found high in the atmosphere. So way, way up, maybe like, 6,000 meters or 20,000 feet up That's in the really sky. That's really high. Yeah, and they're usually made of ice crystals. They're kind of pretty. They're beautiful clouds. Mm -hmm. And these clouds usually signal that the weather is going to be fair, it's going to be clear, it's going to be nice, and their shape often tells us which way the wind is blowing. Oh, I didn't know that. But it's only telling us which way the wind is blowing at 6,000 feet, you know? Oh, so it might be different down here. So it might be different down here, but we know what- My weather station might have a different direction. You're right, yeah. Okay, isn't that pretty cool? Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and then there's Whoa. these other what? clouds. What just happened? And these clouds are oh, called- what are these? Stratus clouds. Oh, oh, I like these too. So stratus clouds- They look like you could like bounce on them. They do kind of yeah. look like that. These guys are horizontal and layered. They kind of look that way, right? Yeah. And they can blanket the entire sky um, in a single pattern. So you might look out and the whole sky is covered in these stratus clouds. And, I like them. Yeah, and stratus clouds often form at a boundary of a warm front where the warm, moist air is forced up over the cold air. Oh, wow, I didn't know that either. That's neat. Yeah, isn't that really cool? Yeah. So, the presence of stratus clouds usually means a chilly, overcast day. And if there's going to be rain or precipitation from the stratus clouds, it's usually in the form of a drizzle or a light snow. Oh, so not much in my rain gauge. Not much in your rain gauge. But maybe a little. Maybe a, a little bit. Oh, huh. And then the other kind of cloud I want to talk to you about, these are the three big oh. ones. Oh. Yeah, these are called cumulus clouds. And these are large and they're lumpy and their name comes from Latin and it means a heap or a pile. And you They do look why. like a heap or a pile. Yeah, like a pile of hay or something up there. Is In that the a rabbit? I think I see a rabbit. Yeah, that's exactly what these clouds are good for. These are really good clouds for finding shapes in them. So these clouds, they're pretty high up too. They're about 12,000 meters or 39,000 feet high. Wow. And cumulus clouds are created by strong updrafts of warm, moist air. And so the weather they bring depends on how big they are and how high they are. Oh. So the higher the base of the cloud, the drier the atmosphere, and the, the better the weather will be. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, and the clouds, if they're located close to the ground, that means that it's probably going to be a heavy snow or a rain. I didn't realize you could learn so much about the weather from the clouds. I know. It's really cool. And you could <gasps> also find an elephant. You see an elephant? Yeah, don't I you? I see a Scottish Terrier dog. You have a great imagination. Thanks. Okay. How about fog? Do you know what fog is? Um, yeah, well, it blocks you from seeing when your mom's driving. That's true. Fog is actually a cloud. Did you know that? What? Yeah. Fog is a cloud that touches the ground. Oh, wow. So fog shows up when water vapor or water hid in its gaseous form condenses. And when it condenses, the molecules of water, that vapor becomes tiny little liquid droplets that hang around in the air. And so you can see the fog because of these tiny little water droplets. So if you were to walk through it long enough, you would get wet. Right. Yeah. Sort of. You'd feel wet. Right. Damp. Yeah. yeah. So fog happens when it's really, really, really humid. 
and there has to be a lot of water vapor in the air for fog to form. Oh. So I don't know if you ever noticed this, but in the winter here, we don't ever really get fog. Really? Yeah. Because it's, it's not very humid. Here, when it's really cold, all the water that's in the air has frozen. And so there's not enough water to make fog. Well, that's neat. Yeah, but particularly when um, it's rained or in the, I notice fog more in the spring or in the fall, that's when it's really humid and you tend to get more fog. Oh. Now this is really cool. But, but, but. In order for fog to form, you actually have to have some kind of dust or pollution in the air because that's what the water vapor in the air is gonna condense around is around that that those really fine small particles oh wow i didn't know that yeah huh. so that's kind of cool huh so do you get more fog like on dirt roads than you do on cement roads or asphalt roads i don't think probably because i think you don't have to have very much pollution oh, okay. um and i think when fog kind of rolls in it has more to do with the amount of moisture in the air than it does the amount of pollution but if there's no pollution in the air, which would be, I think, really hard, then you wouldn't get any fog. Oh, okay. Okay, so do you know what rain is? Um, yeah, it's when water falls from the sky. You're right. It is when water falls from the sky. So what happens is, remember those clouds we were talking about and how they're filled with water droplets? Yes. Well, those water droplets, over time, they, they bounce around and they bang into each other in the cloud because um, they're all kind of packed in there tightly and the tighter they get and the more they bang into each other the bigger the raindrop becomes Whoa! and eventually the raindrop gets heavier and heavier and heavier and then it becomes too heavy and it falls to the ground out of the cloud oh no yeah and that's how we get rain that's really neat yeah it is pretty cool now what about the word sunshine. This seems pretty obvious to me, but do you know what sunshine is? Well, um, well, it's the light coming from the sun. Yeah, basically, it's direct sunlight that doesn't have any clouds in the way of it or anything like that. And generally, we see sunlight in pretty big areas when we talk about sunlight, right? Sure, yes. Okay. How about atmosphere? Um. Um, I've heard the weatherman say atmospheric pressure. There you go. So atmosphere is the layer of gases that surround our planet. So oh. it's, it's, um, it's made up of a lot of different things, but it's mostly nitrogen and oxygen, which is things that we need to breathe. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's the stuff that we need to breathe. If we didn't have an atmosphere... We'd have to be wearing space suits. Oh, that yeah. would be fun, though. That It would be fun, but probably not all the time. True. Yeah. So the atmosphere is really, really spread out. Um, and so we don't really notice it weighing down on us. But it's equal to a layer of water more than 10 meters deep. What? Yeah. So 34 feet of water covering the entire planet. I didn't know that. So that is a lot of pressure. It's actually pretty heavy, but it's thinner the higher up you go, and there's no atmosphere in space. That's why we wear spacesuits up there. Oh. Yeah. So I'm wondering, um, there are some instruments that we can use to predict weather. Um, and these... Um... These are kind of fun instruments, and you've got some of them on your weather. I do? Yeah. Like what? Well, you have a thermometer on there. I do. Yeah. How does that predict the weather? Well, it tells us what the, we what the temperature of the weather is. Oh, okay. And let's see. You can use something called a hydrometer, and that is used to predict the humidity in the atmosphere. So do you remember what humidity is? Um, how wet the air is. Right, so a hydrometer helps us 
forecast weather patterns. And so meteorologists might use a hydrometer to decide what the weather's going to look like over time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So hydrometers, we use those for humidity. And then there's something else called a barometer, or you might hear the weather person say uh, the barometric pressure. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard that? I have. Well, that's an instrument used to measure air pressure. Oh. And that's important in weather, too. Wow. Then there's this other thing called a psychrometer. That's a big word, psychrometer. That is a big word. And that measures humidity. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, there's all sorts of wow, kind of cool, cool. cool, fun things. And then we have things like weather vanes, and we have things like... Isn't that a restaurant? <laughs> it is a restaurant. How does that predict the weather? Well, this thing right here... Yes. This, my arrow thingy. This is also called a weather vane. Oh, no way. Yeah. And so it tells us which way the wind is blowing. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. So there's all sorts of things that we can use to predict the weather. All right. So, hey, Miss Becky. Hey, what? Do you know the difference between weather and climate? No, what? Well, you can't weather a tree, but you can climb it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Katie. You're, yeah, yeah, I see that your joke book has come back. Yes. Yeah, that's great. I thought you'd like that. Do you know how the water cycle works? Um, well, water goes up and water comes down and then water goes back up and water comes back down. It's like a circle, right? Water circle? Right, it's like a water circle. So when the sun warms up the ocean, the surface of the ocean, yeah. that water evaporates into the air. Oh! Okay. And that, that water that evaporates into the air eventually forms clouds. Clouds. So oh. like the clouds that we were talking about earlier. Yes. And as those clouds get more and more water, the raindrops get closer and closer together. And as the rain gets drops get closer and closer And together, then it gets too full. And it's like when you try and carry too many groceries and they go wow all over the place. It drops it on the ground. Yeah, just like yeah. that. So then you end up with rain. So wow. and don't forget that the wind is important in this too because as the water accumulates over the ocean, the wind might blow those rain clouds somewhere else. So oh. Yeah, so as you kind of keep watching this weather pattern, it doesn't have to just be the ocean, right? You can evaporate water off of, of streams and lakes and rivers. My water bottle. And trees. Oh. Right? So trees are going to give, um, when they're damp on their leaves, that water will get evaporated into the air too. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. So as that that cycle continues it helps to feed and water things that might be dry from things that might be really wet oh yeah yeah pretty That's cool huh? so how do you think temperature is measured do you know um with a thermometer you're right it is yes. measured with a thermometer oh i'm good at this ask me another how does the thermometer work N not that one ask me a different one what um what does temperature tell us? How warm or cold it is. Yeah. It actually tells us the hotness or the coldness of an object. Oh yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um if you've ever baked something in the oven, yep. you turn the temperature up to maybe 350 or 400 or 425, depending on what you're baking, because you want the inside of whatever it is you're baking to reach that temperature. Yes. And so when we talk about something feeling hot or cold, we're talking about temperature. Temperature. You've got it. Okay. So coming back to my question about how a thermometer works, do you have um, any thoughts about maybe how it might work? Um, um, wait. Yes, I think so. Um, well, in school we were talking about how when things get cold they shrink 
and when they get warm, they sometimes get bigger. Does that have anything to do with it? It does. You're absolutely right. So oh. the very, very first kind of basic thermometers were made out of mercury. Oh. And mercury is a really special metal. And it it's a liquid metal. So that's kind of different. Have yeah, you? it is. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But we use it because when mercury gets hotter, it expands in its size. And so the amount that it expands is directly related to the temperature. Whoa, cool. So if the temperature increases by 20 degrees, the mercury expands and it moves up the scale by twice as much as if the temperature had only increased by 10 degrees. Oh, wow. So all we have to do is we have to write the right markings on the glass scale that the, the mercury is inside and we can figure out the temperature. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. So I've got this off of your windmill oh, yeah. weather station. And you can see, here's the temperature here. Ooh, it's isn't that warm. Really cool? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is really kind of important to know. Okay, why? When we talk about temperature here in northern New England, we're talking about it in the temperature scale Fahrenheit. Yes, I've heard about that a lot. Yeah. Yes. But you know what? what? We're kind of unique that way because the rest of the world talks about temperature in the scale of Celsius. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's actually only a couple of countries that use the Fahrenheit scale. So Belize uses the Fahrenheit scale, Myanmar uses the Fahrenheit scale, Liberia, and the United States. That's it. Whoa! And everybody else uses Celsius. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so do you know on the Celsius, on the Celsius scale what temperature water freezes at? Um, I know in Fahrenheit it's 32. Right, in Fahrenheit it's 32. But I don't know what it is in Celsius. In Celsius it's zero. Oh, well that makes sense. Yeah, huh. pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. All right, now check this out. Okay. Do you know what temperature water boils at in either Fahrenheit or Celsius? Um... The hot kind. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> the hot kind. So in Fahrenheit, water boils at 212 degrees. Oh, 212. Okay, cool. Yeah. And in Celsius, water boils at 100 degrees. Celsius seems easier. Celsius is really easy, and that's an awful lot of the reason why most of the world uses it. But if you aren't sure, you can always remember that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and okay. it boils at 212 degrees 212. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay. Cool? Yeah. All right. So if you're talking to our friends across the pond, you should probably talk to them in Celsius. Otherwise, they'll be really confused why you're baking your special K loaf at 300. 50 degrees. That will be very confusing to them. That probably would be confusing. And they'd wonder yeah. why you're not burning it. That's probably very true. I want to read with you some really interesting scriptures about the day God created the atmosphere for the firmament. Do you want to do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Genesis 1, 7 through 9 says this. It says, and that's exactly what happened. God made a huge space between the waters. He separated the waters under the space from the waters above it. And God called that huge space sky. And there was evening and there was morning. It was day number two. Whoa. So it talks about like space and water and how water is part of our atmosphere. You're right. Yeah. And in a different version, it says this. It says, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters, waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. So God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. That was a lot of firmament. There's a lot of firmament yeah. in there. This is kind of interesting because 
in this version, it says that God called the firmament heaven, and heaven we think of as the place where God lives. Yes. Yeah, we do. We do. But in this case, heaven means the heavens or the air or the firmament around us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Yes. Do you remember there was this story about Jesus and weather? Do you remember Jesus? He was he was teaching and he was telling the people about God mm. and it was a long day and um and at the um, end of the day, his disciples said, "You know what? Let's get in the boat, and and we're gonna go across the, across the Galilee." And and Jesus said, "That sounds like a great idea." I'm tired, and he fell asleep, and he fell asleep, and he was in the back sleeping on a cushion, and a big storm came, and the disciples got really scared. They thought they were going to sink. They thought they were going to sink. They thought they were going to die. Yeah. They thought they were going to drown. Yeah. And they said, Jesus, teacher, don't you care if we're going to drown? I think I would have woken him up too. Yeah. And what did Jesus do? How did he sleep through that? Well, you know, Jesus was very, very safe in God's plan. And he knew that God was not going to let anything happen to him. Oh, wow. But more importantly, Jesus knew that he had the power to control the wind and to control the storm. Oh, yeah. So cool. And so he got up and he ordered the wind to stop. And he said to the waves, he said, quiet, be still. It's so neat that they listened to him. It's really cool. And then... It's really neat to remember that even when life seems really crazy, all we have to do is call on Jesus and he can calm the storm in our lives. You're right. Yeah. And the winds died down and it was completely calm. That's so cool. What do you think the disciples said? Not much. They probably went, oh. I think you might be right. Yeah. They weren't really sure what to do. But you know what? Even though they were really scared, and even though they woke Jesus up because they were really scared, they went to the right person. Yes. So when we're scared, in particularly if the weather is bad and it's making us nervous, the place that we should go is we should pray and we should ask Jesus to keep us safe and to be with us. Yes. Isn't that a cool story? That's a great thing to remember. It's one of my favorite stories about weather. Me too. Well, the last thing that we need to do for this award today is we need to make a pinwheel. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Doesn't that sound fun? Do you think it would fit on my weather station? I can't imagine anything else fitting on your weather station, but maybe if you took the top off, you could just make it a little taller. I think that would be really cool and make it pretty. Well, you can work on that. Maybe your dad can help you put a hole in the top or something. Yeah, I bet he can. Yeah. So we're going to make a wind pin wheel. And um, I think that'll be really fun. We can decorate it. And then we can see which way the wind's blowing. I bet Louie would want to make one too.